i 
baba katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Ashukrani katika mioyo yetu baba. Toja mbele yako. Sema asanti kwa yale ambao umetutendea. Kwa kwamba huo si wimbo tu tunaouimba baba. Ila baba tushapokea huo mkate wa uzima. Tushanyoea kutoka hicho kijito cha uzima baba. Umetuongoza hatua baada ya hatua. Umejifunua kwetu hatua baada ya hatua. Umetungazia nuru ya wakati ya jioni baba. Tusema ni asanti. Toleta haja zetu zote mbele yako baba. Tukisema baba kwamba tumeona hapo nyuma ukitushendania. Hatuna hatuna shaka ya kwamba hata yale yako mbele yetu pia utatushindania baba. Yasikaje yakatuzuia kusikia neno lako asubuhi ya leo tukifikiria na kupanga na kujali tuachane na yote baba tukaweke nia zetu na mioyo yetu katika neno lako asubuhi ya leo ili ukaweze kujifunua kwetu zaidi bariki wana wako wanapoketi kusikiza baba roho mtakatifu ukaje katikati yetu baba na ukatende kazi yako tusaidie tunaponena neno lako hapa asubuhi ya leo ya kwamba isiwe ni maneno ya binadamu yoyote baba ila tuseme tu yale ambao umenena tayari baba bila kuongeza chochote baba ndio maombi yetu tukabidhi hii baada katika katika mikono yako tukimwombea mchungaji wetu pia pale aliko akikuhudumia pia ukaweze kumbariki na kumpatia ushindi tuomba katika jina la bwana yetu Yesu Kristo amen God bless you church. Bwana abariki kanisa. Are you happy to be in church this morning? Kwa kanisa ni asubuhi ya leo. Amen. Uh, receive greetings from our pastor. Kaini salamu kutoka kwa mchungaji wetu. Mmezipokea? Najua atawasikia kwa YouTube. He will listen to you on the YouTube. Mmezipokea. Ako mwingi. He's in wingi. He's going to preach a convention there. Please keep him in your prayers. Visitors among us, you're most welcome. Any visitors among us this morning? Visitors, inua tu watu tutakuita hapa mbele. Ni kuinua tu tu we acknowledge you. Visitors. Oh God bless you sister, God bless you brother. Any other visitor? Mgeni yote mwingine? God bless you so much. Please well, give them, well, welcome well, them with a clap. Amen. We love visitors in this church. Amen. Amen. Uh, there was one announcement regarding a youth uh, meeting in Kenal Church. The pastor made this announcement on Thursday. But for those who are not there, I'll, I'll read it. On behalf of the message of the Our Assembly, Kenal Church, I want to extend this invitation to our first annual youth convention that will be held at St Michael Girls High School kutoka huko kule kwenye shule ya upili ya St Michael from the afternoon of Thursday the 8th of August kuanzia dhuhuri ya tarehe 8 and run through Sunday the 11th August 2019 hadi tarehe 11 Ijumapili the theme of the convention will be Isaiah 118 somo la mkutano huu itakuwa Isaiah 119 come now and let us reason together sasa tukawaze pamoja we look forward to your attendance tutazamia kuepo kwenu and participation na hata kuepo we ask you to register early to book a space for yourself tuwaulizeni mjiandikishe mapema ili mpate mahala important to note ya muhimu kujua target group should be 12 years and above wale watahudhuria watakuwa miaka 12 kwenda juu the charges will be 500 shillings Malipo, per participant shilingi 500 kwa kila mtu please let us know early if you will attend tafadhali tujue mapema so kama utakuepo ili tufanye mpangilio ya ipaswavyo that is pastor masila huyo ni mchungaji masila from keno church kutoka kanisa la keno so if you want to attend that youth meeting kama unataka kuhudhuria mkutano ule wa vijana get in touch with your youth chairman tafadhali eh, wasiliana na mwenyekiti wa vijana know that you are going to be attending ajue kwamba utakuwa unaandikishwa kuhudhuria mkutano ule amen amina 
Are you ready for the word? Muko tayari kwa neno? Amen. We shall stand and read the scriptures. Tusimameni tusome andiko. And we shall read Revelation chapter 11. Tusoma ufunuo sura ya 11 verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. Malaika wa saba akapiga baragumu pakawa na sauti kuu katika mbingu zikisema ufalme wa dunia umekwisha kuwa ufalme wa Bwana wetu na wa, na wa Kristo wake naye atamiliki hata milele na milele. May the Lord add blessings to his word. Bwana bariki usomaji wa neno lake. Mweza kuketi. Amen. Uh, this morning we are going to have a topic. Asubuhi leo tutakuwa na somo. And our topic na la somo letu is the seventh trumpet. Ni ile baragumu ya saba. The seventh trumpet. Baragumu ya saba. Our pastor has been going through an amazing uh, topic called the feast of the trumpets. Amen. And in the feast of the trumpets, he has made it clear to us what a trumpet is and the difference between the trumpets and the seals. Another thing we have seen is that all the trumpets sound under the sixth seal. Bwana asifiwe sana. Hiyo tushajua. We know that. For the last one and a half months or Kwa one month or so. Moja Na kama bado hauelewi hiyo. And if you don't, don't uh, still understand please that. Please feel free to see the pastor for private tuition. There is that option. Step by step, moja kwa moja, so that we understand the trumpets. Zile and then he went a step ahead na mbele, and said at the end na mwisho, of the sixth trumpet, wa ya sita, the Jews are driven back into their homeland. Wa wa kwao. And there is a gap between the sixth and the seventh trumpet na kati ya ya sita na ya where something happens. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amina, that's right. Now, the trumpets denote political disturbance. Baragumu zilileta utata wa siasa. That means when a trumpet happens, inamaanisha kwamba baragumu ikipigwa, people notice. Watu wanatambua. When a trumpet happens, wakati baragumu inapigwa, it is written in the history books. Inaandikwa kwenye vitabu vya historia. You can read about it in school. Unaweza isoma ukiwa shuleni. Bar- a seal na muhuri denotes a spiritual disturbance unaleta utata wa kiroho it will never be written in a history book haitawahi andikwa kwenye kitabu it will pass and the people will not notice itapita na watu hawatatambua praise the name of the lord it happens in the spiritual realm inatukia kwenye hali ya upeo wa kiroho the trumpet happens in the physical realm baragumu yatukia kwenye hali iliyopo bwana asifiwe sana amina and we are physical people na sisi ni watu you would wonder then why preach the trumpet utawashanga kwa nini tuwa If they have something to do with the Jews. Kama inayo tu shughuli na Wayahudi. And they are not Jews. Na sisi Wayahudi. The reason of preaching the trumpet is because ni kwa sababu when they happen wakati yatukia we can see. Tunaweza ona. It is God assisting us. Ni Mungu akitusaidia using the trumpet akitumia baragumu which belong to the Jews. Ambazo ni za Wayahudi. But the effects of the trumpet matokeo ya baragumu are written in your newspaper. Andiko kwenye majarida. CNN. Iko kwenye there are BBC. Read them on the internet. It is God assisting you to see the revelation of the seals through what you can see. So when the prophet says the trumpets have nothing to do with us. He's right. 
They have everything to do with it. But then why bring them to us? Oh, he's full of grace and mercy. He wants you to see. So that you may use it. The way God arranged it is like this. Today we cannot preach the seventh trumpet. We can only lay up background. Praise the name of the Lord. The prophet puts it like this. God arranged the trumpets in chronological order according to the days and the calendar of man. Trumpet one, then two, then three, then four, all the way to seven according to the years of man. But look at the seals. The seals are all mumble jumble. You cannot follow the seals using a human calendar. I mean, that's right. Only the first three seals. The deception of the white horse rider. Matadom and the red horse rider. Is it? And the famine under the third horse rider. Following each other like that. In a trinity. After that what happens? Unless you have a prophet. To put everything where it yeah. is. From there you get completely lost. Because after that to arrange it in time because the third horse rider is the time of the reformers immediately after the third seal it is the sixth seal that comes to operate to drive the Jews back into their homeland after the sixth seal what happens the fifth comes after the sixth seal. The souls under the altar of the Jews who are killed under the sixth seal. Are we together? Then after the fifth seal, what happens? The fourth seal now comes there. The priest in operation. But between the fifth and the fourth Inside there, there is a mysterious gap. And inside that gap, the seventh seal is revealed. Amen. How will you know that? That's right. Praise the name of the Lord. What does he do to us? He gives us the trumpet that we might use them. It is not our portion, but the trumpets are given to us that we might use them as a timepiece. Because in the trumpets, there is no way the fifth can sound before the fourth. Just to sound the first one, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh. Yes, sir. Another thing is that as he's dealing with the Jews, something happens in the rest of the world as he's dealing with the Jews. If we look at the fourth trumpet in Revelations 8, 12, the pastor said this topic should not be harassed. So we are not going to harass it. Even if I cover just 10%, may God help me not to be disappointed. There is no hurry. And the third 
and the, and the fourth angel sounded and the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so as the third part of them was darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise. 13 is what I want. And I beheld and had an angel flying through the midst of heaven. Saying with a loud voice. Whoa, whoa, whoa. To the inhabitants of the earth. By reason of the other voices of the trumpet. Of the three angels. Which are yet to sound. That is a sign unto the people. Every war is a world war. So the angel comes and declares. From now henceforth, the next three angels who are going to sound trumpet, every trumpet will be a world war. <laughs> As a timepiece. So when you see a world war, trumpet. When you see a world war, another trumpet. When you see a third world war, is another trumpet. So that is what happens to the world. But inside, in the closet, God dealing with the Jews. So the trumpet comes with a duality. Two one. A world war to the world and a secret work to the Jews. I mean, that's right. Always think about it like that. In the second world war, the sixth trumpet, even the world did not know what was happening with the Jews in Germany. Germany. Then they knew that Hitler has invaded Poland. Wow, Hitler, Hitler was invaded France on the other side. Hitler, Hitler wants to take over the world. He wants to rule the whole world. Let us go and fight him. But inside Germany, inside Poland, there was a secret work going on that the world knew nothing about. After the war ended, and the survivors came out of the, uh, the, the camps, out of Ashwis and the others, is when the world knew what had been going on with the Jews inside Eastern Europe. It was a secret work, but to the world, it was That's right. That is how a trumpet operates. And the prophet wanted to preach all the tram trumpets. And he planned himself. And he said he is going to preach the trumpets just the same way he preached the seals. In July of 1964. And he planned meetings. Even sent invitations to Mexico, Jamaica, and all the other believers who are there. And he tried to hire the school auditorium to have a series of seven days to preach the seven trumpets one day after that. And God will not give it to him. And the plans for the auditorium uh, were not coming to pass. He could not get continuous days. And they were saying he can do the next week. And the next week he had planned to come here to Kenya. It's the truth. He was supposed to come here the next week. And then Kenyatta and Odinga started fighting. It is not starting now. It stopped the prophet from coming to Kenya. Jaramogi akaitisha guns kutoka kwa Russia, si ndio? Zikalanda pa airport. And they came to the airport. Mtoto wa Slovakia. Sikachukuliwa zikawekwa Jogo House. And they were taken to Jogo House. Mary, ikatoka, ikakuja, 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 ikakuja,
These are not just stories. Ika, ika ikarande pale there, was ship, there was a ship also that came to at the coast. Ilikuwa imeja tanks. And it had all weapons. Na imeja guns. It had weapons. Na sasa ikakuwa ni state of ima, emergency. Kwa sababu jambo la dharura. Eh ule mzee ameletoa mbi mambo ya vita. Na ikakuwa vita and there was war. Now that is why the prophet did not come here. Na hiyo ikafanya nabii asije huku. Oi, misa ingine vile mnaniangalia. Acha niwaambie kwenye iko tafadhali. Let me just look for it in the message. Praise the name of the Lord. Jambo antukuzwe. Ah yes, ebu nipatie feast of the trumpets. Karamu ya baragumu. 8 8 Now today sasa leo sorry samahani 6907 19m Bwana asifiwe sana Amina There is a point I want to bring across Kuna jambo ambalo nataka kuliingiza Because things don't just happen Koko mambo hayatukii tu hivyo Things don't just happen Mambo hayatukii hivyo tu Today leo I was want to announce that the meeting that we were planning I was planning going to this next coming week in Africa over with Brother Joseph Boze in Kenya and Tanganyika we are unable to have the meeting with a telegram back from Brother Boze last week three of our own missionaries were killed and murdered and they are having an uprise there now and the communists are slipping guns into the natives claiming they got fish boats setting around walisema ni meli za kutega samaki kumbe zinapitisha nini It is the history end of the history of Kenya. Ipo. But the point I am making is that the preaching of the trumpets was obstructed by so many things. And in 17 of the same message he says And well Yesterday jana I went into the room and I said Lord I may not use so many words but understand please God what I mean in my heart What is the matter that everything is cut off from preaching those trumpets And then he came and revealed it And now this morning I want to speak to you on the reason why kwa sababu iliyofanya nisihubiri baragumu we may not preach the seven trumpet this morning but we will preach on the reason why lakini tuhubiri kwa sababu gani praise the name of the lord the lord came unto malachi 4 and he told him the reason you cannot preach the seven trumpet is because you already preached them under the six seal praise the name of the lord and it is not profitable that you preach all the other trumpet one by one but it is profitable that you let the believers know about the feast And it is profitable that you teach the believers about the sixth trumpet which has happened in their lifetime and the seventh trumpet so that in between those two we can insert something that will be very important for the bride. Praise the name of the Lord. So that's why we say that the way the trumpets were preached jinsi baragumu zilivyohubiriwa they were preached inside of the seals zilihubiriwa ndani mwa hizo mihuri and the way the seven the seal which is a total secret na jinsi mhuri wa saba au ngurumo ya saba ambayo ni siri totoro the way the seven the seal is preached jinsi mhuri wa saba unahubiriwa it is hidden inside the trumpet imefichwa kwenye baragumu the seventh seal is revelation chapter in is revelation chapter 8 give us revelation chapter 8 
the seventh seal if you want to understand it clearly you will find it hidden under the and when he had opened the seventh seal there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour next verse and I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets so the seventh seal ends in silence as verse and from there the trumpets are introduced to the Jews. If you go and listen to the message that is called the seventh seal that was preached in March 1963 the prophet is going to read that scripture of Revelation 8 1 and he will say this one is not revealed yet and then he starts preaching the 144,000 and most of that message book that is called the seventh seal is only the trumpets. It's the ceiling of the 144,000. And at the end of it he says but for the seventh seal it is not revealed. So the seventh seal then trumpets. But that is not for us. It's for those it's supposed to be hidden to. For us it is made plain. Praise the name of the Lord. Because when he comes to preach the trumpet and he reads the scripture of the trumpet, the one our pastor prayed for us in Isaiah 18.1 In this book, uh, the feast of the trumpets, go back to the feast of the trumpets, Immediately he reads the scripture on the trumpet. Then thereafter you find the plainest and the best revelation of what the seventh seal is inside the trumpets. That's why he kitabu in a that's why it is. Feast of the Trumpet. My wife knows. I can on my drawer next to my bed for about five, six I've years. I've just kept it next to my bed for a long time. I have a message book. 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 Because things are mixed here, there, 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 there. Praise the name of the Lord. Unless you join this with the seven seals and connect it to the sixfold purpose of Gabriel's visit to Daniel, that's right. But katika hii kitabu, in this book, that is where the prophet tells us a few things plainly. 84. 84. He says, Asema. and now, Nasasa. is that uh, 64, sorry. 64. 16. Now, if I come with a message of Pentecost, I would be in the Laodicean church. And it would not be right. That's the reason that Wesley could not take Luther's message. Luther was in one age. Church age. And Wesley was in another age. If Jesus would have come in with the message of Moses, it would not have worked. If Moses would have come with the message of Noah, it would not have worked. Give us 128. From paragraph 28 all the way to 134. That is not the trumpet. That is the seventh seal. Is hidden inside there. In the seventh seal book, he said it is not revealed. He said no man knows it. He said this is 
is a total secret. He said it will be total silence. But in the trumpets, he gives it to us. He tells us, notice, Revelations 10, 1 to 7, all these mysteries are to be revealed to the bride by the messenger of the Laodicean churches. Is that the seventh seal? Has anybody got a revised version Bible? If you have, you'll notice there where it says. The angel, and it is in parentheses or in bracket, and it says, they go. Ah, the messenger to the Laodicean churches. See, Revelations 10, 1 to 7. And he said that in that day that he seen him come down and he eat up the little book. You see, the seals are in two portions. The seventh seal is in two portions. That first portion where it is spoken and the second portion where it is eaten. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. The seventh seal, two portions. When he had the little book and he put one foot on the land, one on the sea, and so by him, that lives and ever and ever that time shall be no more. And when he did, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders uttered their voices, John was about to write, and he said, don't write it. Finally, 134, he concludes the seventh seal in 134 by saying this. This is the complete revelation of Jesus Christ. And the seven seals had the mystery hid of what? It all was and is supposed to open it in the last day at the Laodicean church at the end time. Thanks be to God that finishes the message to the church. That finishes it. When they look back and see what has been you and see where it all brought up, that finishes it, the age of the church. Seventh seal complete. Next paragraph. Now notice the trumpets that we are speaking of. Now he starts with the trumpets. Praise the name of the Lord. That is how he has arranged it. So that only by listening to Malachi 4 can you get it. We've already seen with the pastor that Revelation chapter 9 is the trumpet but it goes up to the sixth trumpet. After the sixth trumpet uh, the World War 2 is over then there is a calm. There is a calm. And then God inserts Revelation 10. He inserts the seventh seal just after the sixth trumpet. That's where we are today. After, immediately after at the end of Revelation chapter 10 the prophet tells us that the bride disappears in the silence of the seventh seal. The bride disappears. Then when we start chapter 11 it is not until Verse 15, what we have read this morning, that he declares the seventh trumpet. But that scripture we have read this morning, the end result of the seventh trumpet, that behold, the kingdom of the Lord is here. The seventh trumpet. Its details begin immediately and after. Chapter 10, when we open chapter 11, verse 1, the seventh trumpet starts operation from there. Isn't it? And it says, now this is our part, 11. Revelation 10, 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings, and that is the table. 
going Ujumbe. around the world. Ujumbe ukizuka dunia yote. Many nations. Kwa mataifa mengi. And it is us speaking these words. Na ni sisi tukinena neno hili. Is you testifying to your neighbor? Wewe ukishuhudia jirani yako. Is your life ni maisha yako ikitoa it is your life testifying to your schoolmates that is that scripture after that scripture is done the bride disappears bibi harusi anatoweka is summoned anaitwa and the bride is out of the way bibi harusi anaondoka then chapter 11 begins sura ya 11 and there was given me a reed like unto a rod na nikapewa fimbo kama kijiti and the angel stood saying malaika akasema akisema rise and measure the temple of god mama na ukapima and the altar and them that worship there na wale ambao wanaabudu but the court give, give me up to give me verse 3 msari wa 3 and i will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth that's the seventh trumpet so the seventh trumpet starts immediately the church takes a rapture so once we take a rapture immediately the seventh trumpet starts mara hiyo hiyo baragumu ya saba inaanza kazi kwa wayahudi now my message this morning is very simple that kwamba if immediately after the rapture then two witnesses are here if we found out what are the conditions necessary for the seventh trumpet to start operating then we look at our world and see if those conditions are in place remember the trumpets are our time they are our watch if we look at the world and we find out are there conditions that are in place for two witnesses to be on the ground we can be able to tell how far or how near are we to the rapture what we are interested in here is the rapture You tell people that the rapture is near. And they tell us even in 1977 when we believed this message the rapture was near. We not even wanted to marry we did not even buy property because we knew that the rapture was coming tomorrow and because of that mindset you tell people today the rapture is near and they say the same same thing it behooves us to ask in 1977 what conditions in place for the seventh trumpet to start operation Then look at our day today and ask ourselves when we look at the world around us are there conditions in place for the seventh trumpet to start operation brother and sister if elijah and moses start ministering in israel tomorrow they will not have broken any word that means the rapture can be there and be with the scripture Amina that's right. Bwana sifiwe sana. Amina. The purpose of the message kusudi ya ujumbe. The son of man, mwana wa Adamu, is to stir up the bride. Ni kumwamsha biharusi. We stop looking at the deception of this world. Ile tuache kuangalia udanganyifu wa dunia hii. Vain promises that this world gives us. Na ahadi ya bure ambazo ulimwamsha biharusi. That time is far spent. Umeenda sana. So now we can discuss conditions. Basi tunaweza angalia hali sasa zilizopo. Tumeelewana? Amina. Tukiangalia ulimwengu. When we are looking at the world, tuone mambo kadhaa and we see so many things. Ambayo iko tayari that are set in place. Ambayo imetabiriwa na nabii wetu. That was prophesied by our, our prophet. Tujue ya kwamba that we should know God is not wasteful. Mungu haharibu wakati. God does not waste. Mungu haharibu. So if he has put a few things in place, it is for a certain work. Ni kwa kazi fulani. 
That will help us. Because we understand the seventh seal now. We can be able to apply it to the seventh trumpet. The seventh trumpet and the seventh seal are not connected. But they run parallel. They are, mi they are mirror images of the other. Not connected. But they are exactly the same. So if you follow the events in the seventh seal, the same sequence of events in the seventh trumpet. But the trumpet is about the political and economic world and the seal is about the spiritual. So if you look at the spiritual conditions that were in place before the, for the seventh seal to come down, it is the same conditions now politically and economically that must be in place for the seventh trumpet to come down. I mean, that's right. Seals, spiritual. Trumpets, political and economic. Those are the conditions. Now we are good. Jesus always gave signs of the conditions of a trumpet. There's a sign he gave for one of the trumpets and he said this, uh, give me ten. Jesus said, Jesus even speaking of it here underlined it and said, when you see the abomination that maketh desolation, spoken by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place brother Branham knocking on the pulpit three times what is that? the mosque of Omar stood in the place of the temple where they burnt it down that was a sign you had to look to the Middle East and you see that sign and you know it is time for that if you don't know the temple of Omar it's there in the next life okay that was a sign that when you see that then no according to the trumpet it is a certain time that one is still standing as a sign to us praise the name of the Lord and they will fight for it and they will fight for it until the appointed time so let us see this parallel between the seventh seal and the seventh trumpet. In 18 it says, Moses and Elijah has got to call the Pentecostal Jubilee is still going on or had up till this time. Now the feast of the trumpets has to be known. And this one over here of Malachi 4 of our day is not connected with that one over there. Not at all. Not at all. It is not connected. The ministry will be Moses and Elijah changing and calling Israel from the Jewish traditions. Listen from the Jewish traditions that had been mixed up. Being prophets, they will believe. They will believe him. Calling them to the Feast of Atonement. Christ letting them recognize Christ. The seal is to let us recognize Christ. The trumpet is to let the Jews recognize Christ. Are you seeing it the same mission? The Jews will be gathering things like that. And when he comes, say, here I am. Where did you get them scars? In the house of my friends. Now, Sasa. Listen now, that is the seventh trumpet. Don't see like these things are very hard. They are all easy. The seventh trumpet 
there are two prophets they are took they are ministering to the Jews to identify the Jesus they crucified to know that that Jesus who was crucified is the Jehovah the one who came to Moses in the wilderness seventh trumpet finished amen otherwise we will not we will not understand that's right now that's the seventh trumpet. Now he says for us. Now the same as those two prophets did. Remember the gentle bride is to have a prophet called Elias. Elijah. So them they have Moses and Elijah. And we have Elijah to call them out of their tradition. The bride just the same as these prophets called the Jews out of Judaism to Christ. Copy of each other. Seven trumpet and seven seal. Copy of each other. Stay with me. Stay with me. The atonement. And the Gentiles already knows the atonement. That's happened. That's right. Because the Gentiles, we already know that Jesus died for our sins on Calvary. We already know that the blood of Jesus saved us from our sins. And by confession, we are saved. That is the atonement. So the Gentiles already know their atonement. But the work of the seventh seal is not to return us to that atonement. It is to call the bride back to the original. The prophet of Malachi 4 is not to call us back to Calvary. The prophet of Malachi 4 is to call us back to Eden. To the original atonement. God in man. Mungu katika binadamu. Amen, that's right. There is atonement. There is original atonement. If you want to know what is atonement, it is to be justified, to be baptized, and to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in fire. That is called the atonement. Then there is the original atonement. To receive the seven seal book. To believe it. And Jesus Christ himself is formed in you. That's right. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The original atonement. The work of the prophet of Malachi 4. The work of the seven seals. Not to take us back to the atonement. That is son of God ministry. His work is to restore us back to the original atonement paradiso bona siwe sana and the work of Moses and Elijah in the seventh trumpet is not to take them to the atonement the atonement they already have they are slaughtering sheep even today. That is their atonement. But the work of Moses and Elijah is to point them to the original atonement. The same word you are listening to today. Amina, that's right. Praise the name of the Lord. The seventh church messenger, the seventh trumpet messenger, is all prophets. What in manabi? Praise the name of the Lord. You know the Jew cannot believe stories. The Jews cannot believe stories. No, no, no. They believe a prophet. And the prophet they believe. Is a prophet with the gift of discernment. Nothing else. Gift of discernment. Being able to read the hearts of men. That is the gift they believe. 
Have you already seen a man with that gift? Praise the name of the Lord. The same gift will replicate again. In the seventh trumpet. That will attract the Jews. Amen. Amen. I pray God to restore my eyesight has been failing over the last several years. Muniombe. Because my eyes have become a problem. So sometimes you see me posing and in Revelation 11 29 Call the ministry will be the ministry of Moses and Elias calling to Israel out of the Jewish traditions of sheep of slaughtering cows and sheep just as the seventh angel's message called the bride out of the Pentecostal tradition of the Pentecostal baptism of the Holy Ghost that's right looking for the Holy Spirit until you feel something has you come into in. a Pentecostal tradition. Yes. The work of the seventh seal is to uproot us from Pentecostal tradition. Kupokea roho na kituko. That's right. Receiving Holy Ghost roho na kituko. Having the sensation after receiving the Holy Spirit. At the, on this date, at this time, in this when year, at this time, time I received. That's a Pentecostal tradition. And the work of the seventh seal is to come and uproot us out of the Pentecostal tradition. To receive the Holy Ghost himself without sensation. Where the only evidence Mahala, that you peke. have received the Holy Ghost is whether something inside of you agrees with his mysteries. And after that, it produces a life. Out of the Pentecostal tradition. Remember Moses and Elijah is to call Israel out of the old atonement of the Lamb. And sheep and blood and goats and sacrifice. To the real living sacrifice. To the what? And the seven angels message. And the same trumpet. Same everything exactly. Seven trumpet. Seven seals. Same everything. Exactly. So if we follow the sequence of the seventh seal, we can come and preach the seventh trumpet comfortably. If maybe within the message, the sequence of the seventh seal is a bit hidden because it's a time of silence. Maybe we can check under the seventh trumpet to see if there is more material provided. And if we can see if he has arranged that seventh trumpet in sequence. Najua nyinyi ni watu tap tap. Mnaelewa hii maneno. Si ndio? You understand these things. Tukiangalia tarumbeta ya saba. When we look at the seventh trumpet, tuchunguze ujumbe na tuchunguze Biblia. And we look in the message in the Bible. Tuone kama imepangwa moja kwa moja vile inafaa kwenda. It has been planned or arranged chronologically. We can take that same sequence. Basi tutachukua utaratibu ule and come here and fit it within the seventh seal. Na tuja tuweke kwenye muundo wa saba. And quickly all the things that are mixed up with everything will jump to where it was supposed to be. Pamoja mahala pake. And we'll get the complete revelation of all the seven seals. From where it starts up to where it ends by studying the seventh trumpet. That is the reason we preach the seventh trumpet. It is to the Jews. It is not for us. It is not connected to us. But it is the same exactly. 
Sawa, sawa. With our seal. And I can assure you. There is so much. Above the seventh trumpet. In the Bible. In the message. It is so clear. Detail by detail by detail. Even the number of years. Everything is clear. The book of Daniel is full of the seventh trumpet. Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ. Uh, in AD 30, the prophet even gives us the time if you read the sixth seal. They came and asked him on Tuesday, the 4th of April, the year AD 30. <laughs> How did he know? He but he said on Tuesday evening. On Tuesday evening, the 4th of April, in the year AD 30, they came and asked him three questions. And he sat down to answer those questions. And that is the book we call today Matthew chapter 24. There is so much available there. Paul has written about the seven trumpets. In the book of Revelation, it is there. Immediately after the sixth seal, we enter chapter seven of the book of Revelation. Verse 1 of Revelation chapter 7 is the first world war. The angels holding the winds in the four corners of the earth. But from there, it is the 144,000. It is the seven trumpets. After Revelation 10, we come into 11. All that chapter is the seven trumpets. We have material. Even if we go to 18, we'll still find more material on the seventh trumpet. So we can use all that material to thoroughly understand the seventh trumpet and then we use it to come in here number one to thoroughly understand the seventh seal. Because understanding the seventh seal is eternal life for you. Number two to put you in a state of emergency. Because once we understand the seventh trumpet, then we know the conditions around which the seventh trumpet must operate. And we look around and we see whether they are there. If they are there, then we know. We get desperate for rapture in faith. Utakula two chips na gedheri. Lakini unakula hiyo gedheri yako ukiambia Mungu Mungu nisaidie. That's right. God help me. Help me. God help me. This rapture is coming. Unyakuzunaja. And I feel some little jealousy in my heart. Yeah. And there is no jealousy that can go in that rapture. It's emergency time. Hakuna. Take it away. Take away that lust. Take away the hatred. Take away the bitterness. Take away the lies. Ondoa magogo maongo. I have to get ready. Lazima nijitayarishe. I mean, that's right. Have we understood why we need to preach the seventh trumpet? That's the reason why the seventh trumpet needs to be preached. The seventh seal is between the sixth and seventh trumpet. But if we thoroughly understand the seventh, we have an easier time preparing ourselves. Because the prophet says, we are lose about things. We are lose about things. And it's not our fault. The same conditions that are being put in place to usher in the seventh trumpet are also affecting us. Isn't it? They affect us. So many times we will not prepare for the rapture because we are frustrated by the conditions of the seventh trumpet. Amen. 
if we know the conditions for example now we know the seventh seal in insight it happened so we know it so so what if you are living in 1956 and you know the seventh seal and you are watching the ministry of William Branham and you look and you see the Pentecostals have rejected him. Then you sit in the Branham Tabernacle and you listen to him crying saying the present stage of my ministry they have all rejected me. Then after that you go and listen and you hear Pentecostals and Protestants have joined together and they have formed the World Council of Churches. And then you watch and you see they have gone to the Vatican to meet the Pope. And they have come back saying they felt the spirit in that meeting. What would you have said? It is time for the seventh seal. Everything would have stopped in your life to prepare for that seventh seal. Because you knew for sure in only in a very short time. And it was only seven years, my brother. And my 56 to 1963. Seven years only. You would know any time now. The mighty angel of Revelation 10 is going to land somewhere on this earth. And you'd have been obsessed. No ungesh. To find out where is he going to land? What is he going to say? What is going to happen? Why? Because you know beforehand the conditions necessary for the seventh seal to take place. In the same way today, if we found out the conditions necessary for the seventh trumpet to take place, and we realize that God is not preparing those conditions, one, if the seventh seal was not let, the seventh trumpet will not be let. Yeti those conditions were in place. Moja kwa moja, hali the seven seal came down. Saba ukaja. Can we look? Do we have conditions today Je, hali leo? for the seventh trumpet kwa to come down? Saba kuja. If we find those conditions, hali hizo. tafadhali. Yes. Buroti yes. maguta maguta bado tutanunua. Nyumba tutajenga. Kila we kitu build. tuendele kufanya. We continue doing what we are doing. Lakini. But Flashing red lights of his coming. When that light comes on, it's not the time to eat your your vibanzi. You throw that pack of peanuts away. That's what he says in that message. And you get obsessed with preparing your bags. Because any time the train will be in the block. Amen, that's right. So, are we ready to, to look for the conditions? Are we together? I really, I really was praying, God, please <laughs> help me <laughs> to say this right. Because I think if you just mislocate this one, it is very serious. And I really wanted us to move together. So that when we start speaking of the conditions <laughs> under which <laughs> the seventh trumpet <laughs> must take place, <laughs> Tarumbeta, Samahani. Seven trumpet. Brother, help me with some water. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, can we use something here from the seventh seal? For the seventh seal to come down, one thing happened. You see, the seals are spiritual, the trumpets are political and economic. For the seventh seal to come down, something happened. There was a spiritual covenant 
kulikuwa na uondoko wa kiroho between Rome kati ya Rome and the church na kanisa Bwana asifiwe sana there was a spiritual covenant between Rome kulikuwa na ahadi ya kiroho kati ya Rome na kanisa something happened jambo la kwanza kusikia protest now they were fellowshiping sasa wakaja pamoja in our seventh trumpet we must watch out for a political and economic covenant kwa maagano ya kiroho ya kisiasa ya kisiasa na kiuchumi that's right between rome kati ya rome and the jews na wayahudi cuz trumpet is about the jews paragumu yanahusu inahusu wayahudi we must look for a political and economic covenant between rome and the Jews kati ya Roma na na Wayahudi just as we had a spiritual covenant jinsi tutuliona between Rome and the church kati ya Rumi na kanisa bwana asifiwe sana amen that was the condition hiyo ndio hali so for us to know if the seven trumpets is almost can we look at this condition tuangalie hali hizi one of the biggest conditions that our prophet has given us hali moja kuu ambayo nabii ametupa Glory be to God. The only way you can enter into a into a into a, into a covenant is when the other person has something you need. Wakati wewe mtu mwingine yeye una kitu ambacho unahitaji that you do not have ambapo huna and there is something you can offer that he doesn't have. Na kuna kitu ambacho unaweza peana ambacho hana so you do an exchange basi mnafanya maagizano au kubadilishana if it is not like that kama sio hivyo then it is a covenant basi ni agano where one is lying to the other ambao mmoja anadanganya mwingine and we know the father of conman na tunajua baba wawezi bwana asiwe sana he is a conniving man yeye ni mtu mwizi he told the church aliambia kanisa come let us worship together njooni tuabudu pamoja it doesn't matter your way of worship haijalishi unabudu vipi we are going to pass some laws that are called sheria freedom of worship ambayo inaitwa uhuru wa kuabudu kila nchi come let us be together njooni tuwe pamoja bring your god leteni mungu wenu and that, 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 that is the way the old pagan rome operated hiyo ndio pagan roma ya kitambo ilifanya the reason the roman empire was so powerful kwa nini utawala wa kirumi ulikuwa ngumu because nguru. they did not impose a religion on their citizens ni kwa sababu hawakulazimu watu wao kuabudu they said yao. the greeks come with your zeus sema wa yunani the egyptians yao. come with your osiris the babylonians come with your gods wenyeji wengine everybody come mwenye. with your god Come to home worship the way you want. Abudu utakavyo. Try to bother you. Hatutashukuliwa nawe. Stop of your gods. Lakini zidi ndio Mungu wako. Recognize the emperor also as a god. Tambua pia mkuu wetu kama Mungu pia. Pia mutambue. Lakini nyinyi abuduni ile Mungu mnata. Worship the god you want. But recognize our god. That was the Roman pagan Roman empire. Hiyo ni utawala wa Kirumi. Follow the spirit. Fuata ile roho. In Papa Rome, kule kwenye Roma ya Papa. It is the same way. Ninyi hivyo hivyo. Come as you are. Joni mlivyo. Come as you are. Joni mlivyo. If you want to baptize under a flag ni sawa. Na kubatizwa chini ya bendera ni sawa. Majimengi ni sawa. Many waters for that fire. Ni sawa. It doesn't matter the doctrine. It delish your God. Joni na miungu wenu. But recognize the authority. Lakini mtambue utawala uliopo. We must watch the economic covenant on the other side. Lazima tuangalie maafikiano ya kiuchumi pia pande ile nyingine. Bwana asiwe sana. Now. To be able to see that we must look at the money situation. Kwa na uwezo wa kuona hilo lazima tuangalie pesa. And that's what I want to talk about. Na hilo nitanena kulihusu. The money situation. Hali ya pesa because the money situation can let you know kwa sababu hali ya kipesa inaweza fanya ujue whether you are about to go home or not kama uko karibu kwenda nyumbani ama la because the money situation kwa hali ya pesa is the condition for the seventh trumpet ni hali iliyopo kwa baragumu ya saba Fifty-eight. 58 58 58 58 Now I believe I was talking to somebody here. Sasa naamini nilikuwa nanena na mtu hapa. He might have been brother Robertson today. Alikuwa ndugu Robertson. Or somebody else about this here. Mtu nilikuwa nanena na yeye. But just on the same thing. Lakini kwa jambo lile lile. I believe on it 
I believe I preached on it here. Naamini nilihudhuria hapa. Sio mbali kitambo sana. What will happen to these United States? Kile kitatukia kwenye muungano wa Kimarekani. Money situation. Kwa hali ya pesa. On this what? Money? Kwa hii hali ya pesa. Well, we are not paying our debts. Tunalipia madeni zetu on taxes that will be paid 40 years from today. Ushuru ambao utalipwa kwenye miaka 40 kuanzia leo. That's far that's how far we are behind. Hivyo ndivyo tulivyo nyuma. That is the United States. Hiyo ni muungano wa Marekani. Kwenye mwaka 1964. The world superpower. Nguvu za kidunia. Did you ever turn on KAR? Je, uligeuka na kuangalia hiyo KAR? KAR ni inoro ya huko. Ama kameme. Station ya radio kule. Ni radio. Or live line au radio ile nyingine and listen to it na kuisikiza from washington kutoka kule washington why kwa nini we are completely busted tumeshushwa moyo yako kunaswa hiyo ni yote if it was busted in 1964 kama ile yeah, yeah, yeah. where is it now basi iko wapi where is the world now ulimwengu iko wapi sasa bwana asifiwe sana mimi You know they used to use gold as money. Money was gold. But then as the economies expanded. In the early 19th century. There was a lot of money to be handled. So gold started becoming very heavy to carry around. So they devised a method. They said Nakasema so, bring your 10 bars of gold let the uh, yako we write for you a paper tuandika karatasi saying 10 dots ikisema uh, to show that you have 10 bars of gold in the bank unayezo, but, uh, uh, so when you exchange that paper okay. with someone if they want basi kama hawana they can come and exchange take that give us the paper and take away the gold dhahabu au watu but if they do not want kama hataki they can keep the paper and use it for another transaction na kuitumia kwa kubadilisha and whenever it will be necessary wakati tu itahitajika it is okay you can come change the gold in the bank sawa unaweza kuja pia ubadilisha na dhahabu and that is what was called the gold standard na hiyo ndio ikaitwa kipimo cha dhahabu every dollar kwamba represented its equivalent in gold ilikuwa sawa na dhahabu kiasi fulani are we together tuko pamoja But what happened? And that was like that in all countries. Then just around this time of the covid. There was an agreement. That we need because of the world door expenses and everything. We to put the gold together. So all the major countries in Europe basi nje zile kuu kule Europa shipped their gold and they started banking it in the Federal Reserve in New York ziweka kule kwa New York and in return na they were given the papers themselves wakapewa makaratasi then they would sit with us basi wangeketi na makaratasi na kusema how many US papers are we holding je tuko na makaratasi nambari ngapi marekani tunayo can we print our own papers tunaweza chapisha and call franks or dushmarks or pounds au pounds that are equivalent with the US papers that we have zilizo sawa na makaratasi ya marekani and our people can use them na watu wetu wanaweza kutumia to buy and sell kununua na kuuza and if they want to buy something from outside the country they can bring their papers wanaweza leta makaratasi yao we give them a few of the US papers wape makaratasi yao ya marekani and buy and they bring na waende wanunue walete that is the world economy hiyo ni uchumi wa kidunia sasa ni lesson ya economy sasa tuko class tuko pamoja I hope you know that I would not say these things just for the sake. Natumai mwajua nisitosema mambo haya tu kwa sababu ya somewhere we are coming to. Kuna mahali ambapo tunajia. And it continued like that. Na ikaendelea hivyo. The United States. Muungano wa Kimarekani 1971. Kwenye mwaka wa 71. They needed to fund a war called Vietnam War. Walitaka kupeana pesa kwa vita. They did not have enough dollars. Hawakuwa na dola za kutosha. To sustain the economy and to supply the world na hata kupenda kwa dunia and also fight the war. Na pia kupigana vita. They printed money. Wakachapisha pesa 
extra papers that did not have a representation in gold. They printed dollars that were just paper to finance the war. France actually got very angry and they sent a ship to collect their gold because of that act I can assure you that ship went back empty because the gold belongs to somebody else whoever collected that gold will never release it So after that, we keep saying that we have a dollar. So if you take a hundred Kenyan shillings, it is one dollar, but it is a hundred of paper equivalent to another paper. Now I'm explaining this why we are completely busted. Isitoshe! Electronic age came. Kizaji cha mitambo ikaja electronic here. So there was no need of a lot of paper anymore. Hakuko itajika makaratasi tena. Money wa numbers on a computer. Pesa ikawa nambari kwenye mitandao. And the bank had the ability to generate those numbers. Na bank ikawa na jinsi ya kuangalia So the days of bringing your money basi kuza kuleta pesa zako. It sits in the bank then somebody else needs money so you loan them that money that you have been given and they return it with interest and you make your profit those days ended now banks make money from lending in this way if you go to the bank and you ask for a loan of 500,000 shillings and it is approved, tomorrow you will find that balance in your account. No money moved. It is just an The bank is going to make money as you repay. That's when now they are making the money. So this world is full of hot air money. Basi ulimwengu umejaa pesa zisizopo. The banks are just generating numbers. Banki zinaweka tu numbers. Numbers and numbers. Nambari na nambari. And that is why. Ndiposa. The world economy right now cannot survive. Uchumi wa kidunia hauwezi. If people save. Kama watu wanaweka pesa. People must be in debt. For the world economy to survive. Countries must be in debt. For the world economy to survive. Because it is through lending. That money comes. There's no money somewhere. For people to be given. As loans. So. You are the seventh seal. Says. You can reduce your frustration by cutting down on your borrowing. Because if you only get worse. He says we are busted. Next slide. The world debt today stands at 247 trillion dollars. Whose money? Whose money? If we are going to trust on our superpower to pay for us this debt, US is only collecting 3.3 trillion per year. How long will they take to repay? The US, for every 100 shillings they are collecting, in tax, they are paying out 106 in, 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 in the debt repayment. Every time they have a deficit of 6. Is there another bastard more than that one? As in Kenya here, for every 100 shillings we collect, 56 shillings we pay debts. You think we have corruption. We have a 
That's why these economies can never improve. They have to collapse. The world economies have to collapse. They are built on hot air. That is a condition for the seventh trumpet. Do you think our president would stop borrowing? He wants. But no option. That debt has to continue increasing for our country to survive. It used to be that before we would get aid and grants. But now we have been told to go into the commercial money market. We are getting new bonds and syndicated loans. And we are getting uh, China Exim Bank loans. China in a two from Copo Pier. I am a moment in the same Umana. There is trouble. Where is the money? Pesa ziwapi? Where is the money? Pesa ziwapi? 64. What's the matter? Shida nini? The gold is all housed up. That one I've told you. And the Jews hold the bond. It's going to be Rome. Now watch. We know who owns the bigger apartment stores. But Rome has the greatest part of the wealth of the world. The rest of it, the Jews have. Thank you. Amen. So, to make Kubaliana Kwanza gold, gold in Mewekwa. The money of the world is hidden somewhere. And this was stolen during the day when people were still looking. There was no single bullet that was shot. They were just cheated. The only other person with wealth is the Jews. Because they have the bond. The bond. And that's why we are praying. Because the countries that used to give us foreign aid are broke. Amen. Something called Euro bond. That is money from the Jews we are borrowing. Because they are the only people with the boats. And the prophet warned us not to do business with the Jews. Because they will wipe you clean. They are merciless. Amen. And we are just playing with them. Rukeni bond moja muone. Amen. Fail to pay one bond and you will see it. So Rome has the wealth. Kwa hivyo Urumi ina utajiri. And the Jews have the wealth. Na Wayahudi wana utajiri. Are we together up to there? Tuko pamoja hadi hapo. Amen. Now what has happened? Je, nini basi kimefanyika? This same man who housed up the gold. Huyu mtu mmoja aliyekuwa na dhahabu yote has raised our taxes in a way that it is impossible to live. In Daniel 11, chapter 20, and he did it nicely, slyly, with flattery, pole, pole, bila vita. Without any war. Amen. Then shall Stand up in his estate a razor of taxes. In the glory of the kingdom. But we have a promise that in a few days it shall be destroyed. And it shall not be destroyed in anger. Or in battle. He shall be destroyed Ataribiwa in global treaties and discussions and agreements. 
to destroy the power of the United States and the world economy. Kuharibu nguvu za Marekani uchumi wa kiulimwengu. And in his estate. Na katika utajiri wake. Shall stand up a vile person. Ataonekana mtu mwingine whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. He shall not be called king so and so. He shall not be called president so and so. He shall not be called prime minister so and so. But he shall rise up. He will not get the honor of a kingdom. But he will come in peaceably. Peaceably. And obtain the kingdom. By flatteries. Amen. Amen. That's right. Conditions for the seventh trumpet. That's what we are discussing. <laughs> Don't forget. Amen. Let's go back to our slides. Let's ask ourselves. How, 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 how wealthy is Rome? Je, utajiri wa Kirumi unatoshana kiasi gani? Kwa sababu Rumi iko na utajiri wa ulimwengu. I checked a paper called the National Post. Eh watu wengine wanasema in uh, 6500 says anasema it is impossible haiwezekani to calculate the wealth of the Roman Catholic Church. Kwa sababu utajiri wote wa kanisa la Kirumi la Catholic. The church itself kanisa likely could not answer that question. Haliwezi kujibu swali hilo. Even if it wished. Hata kama ningependa. Amen. Why? Kwa nini? Let's do land holding. Hebu tufanye kidogo mahesabu. If you take all the Vatican embassies, all the churches, cathedrals, monastery and convents in the world, makanisa yote hayo, and you put them together like this. Yaweke pamoja. In one place. Katika mahali pamoja, they would occupy the whole of Kenya and Uganda combined. Yataketi kwenye ardhi inatoshana na Kenya na Uganda zikiwa zimewekwa pamoja. Hiyo ni real estate. Hayo ni mahesabu kuhusu rasilimali. Wenga ngana tuna kabroti kitengera ama ruai. Amen. And that is not idol land, that is built. Na hii sio ardhi ambayo haijajengwa, ni ardhi ambapo imejengwa. Built land, ukiziweka zote pamoja. Cathedral, 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 kanisa, 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 hospitali, shule nini uziweke hivi? Haya, that's already a lot of wealth, si ndio? Huo ni utajiri mkuu zaidi. Isitoshe. Amen. Social services. Serikali huwa inatumia pesa nyingi katika mambo haya ya kijamii. Lakini Rumi inazo shule za msingi 1095. 43800 secondary schools. Shule za upili 1045. 1358 universities. Vyo vya Katholiki ni 1150. 5500 hospitals. Hospitali 1500. 18000 clinics. Kliniki 1018. 16000 old people's homes. Nyumba za wazee 1016. Weka kando. Amen. Imepita serikali yoyote. <laughs> This is more than any government. Unajua watu wanaulizanga where is Roman power? You know people ask you, Roman, Roman power, power is spread. Nguvu za Kirumi zimetambaa. Na kwa sababu zimetambaa hazionekani. It is spread. Zimetambaa. Collections. Haya ndio makusanyo. Since 325 AD. Tangu mwaka wa 325. Collections are compulsory. Sasa lazima kila mtu atoe mchango. And not just collections. Na sio tu michango. Payment for sins. Malipo kwa sababu ya dhambi. Get from factory payment for this. Malipo ya kupatizwa, malipo ya hii, malipo ya lile. The third seal. Ule mhuri wa tatu. Amen. We can't quantify these collections. Haya hame makusanyo yetu hatuwezi kuiweka kwa kiwango fulani. But those who came from there you know lakini wale waliotoka pale mwajua that they are not optional kwamba hakuna cha kufanya Na Jesus hapa tunakuja hapa pastor anasema hey, nah, please remember your sharit kumbuka yule mchango wako wa sarit mchungaji anatukumbusha it is not good si vizuri there if you don't pay you're Hapu not going to heaven uwezi biguni rahisi hakuna mtu atakuzika na kwa hivyo yeah. hakuna biguni ya kwendwa there is no way of going to heaven so you don't have an option you must pay hauna njia nyingine lazima ulipe amen 1.3 billion bilioni 1.3 is a population of China the largest country we have in the world hicho ndicho kiwango cha watu ambao wako kule uchina direct citizens of Rome wale 
wanachama wa moja kwa moja wa Urumi. The largest country we have in the world. Inchi kubwa zaindi tulionayo duniani basi ni Rumi. So he shall arise, he shall not be given the honor of a kingdom. Kwa hivyo yeye atainuka hata be called this country or that country. Hata bewa hii inchi ama ile. But he shall arise. Lakini yeye atainuka. Amen. The Vatican. Kule Vatikani. Gold Holdings, Vatican Bank, historical buildings, art, pilgrimage for thousands of years, the prophet tells us, uh, next, but I got to go all through the Vatican. Why? You couldn't buy it with a hundred billion billion dollars. And just think the wealth of the world. The Bible said it was found in her. Oh, just think of the great place. The billion times nyakati bilioni moja amen tukomea hapo umtu ni sonko this person is rich amen ni sonko ama sonko huku chini ba he is rich you cannot compete with him huwezi kushindana na yeye bwana asifiwe sana amen in the, in the middle ages katika nyakati za katikati all the land belonged to him ardhi yote ni yake. He would take what he wants. kile anataka. And he would give to whoever he wants. Na anampatia yule ambaye anataka. If we are to quantify his land holdings in Europe that are not built or developed. Ungetafuta kiwango cha thamani cha hii ardhi yote kule Europa. But I can assure you. Lakini naweza kuhakikishia. Holding that gold that he holds. Ushikilie ile dhahabu ambayo yako nayo. That all these riches. Na hao utajiri mwingine wote. There is Hamuna serikali. There is no economy. Hamuna uchumi. That can even come near. Ambao watu wanaweza kukaribia. Amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. And now for our relevance in the trumpet. Na ili kuweza kuhusisha hili na baragumu. He was going to immediately start operation. Alikuwa anaenda kuanza kufanya kazi mara moja. After the sixth trumpet. Baada ya baragumu ya sita. But held it. Lakini Mungu akaishikilia. God held it for you. Mungu akaishikilia kwa ajili yako. That you might come in. Ili uweze kuingia ndani. That the seventh seal. Kwa sababu mguri wa saba. Might be operational. Lazima ufanye kazi. But today. Lakini leo. He is releasing it. Ameachilia hiyo. He is releasing it. Ameachilia hiyo. Amen. How did he hold? Je, alishikilia jinsi gani? By the Jews. Kupitia kwa Wayahudi. Amen. The Jews held it for us. Wayahudi wakaishikilia kwa ajili yetu. Remember they are our servants. Kumbuka hawa ndio wafanyakazi wetu. Amen. They are the servants of the bride. Ndio wajakazi wa biarusi. They held it for us. Walishikilia kwa ajili yetu. God gave them a tough spirit. Mungu akawapa ile roho ngumu. That can they can be able to fight it out there. Ili waweze kupigana nayo pale nje. With this beast. Na huyu mnyama. And hold for a while. Na kumshikilia kwa muda. And restrain him for a while. Na kumzuilia kwa muda fulani. As the seventh seal is under operation. Kwa sababu unaanza kazi yake. Amen. Now we have to ask ourselves. When we see it cracking. When we see it developing cracks. When we see it letting go. What does it say about what time we are? Amen. 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 In the Middle Ages. Katika nyakati za wakati wa katikati. In the Dark Ages. Nyakati za giza. This man, huyu mtu, he hates only two people. Alikuwa na watu wawili anaotuchukia. He, he always hates the elect. Anachukia yule mteule and the Jew. Na chukia Mwayahudi. Watu wa Mungu. Amen. Don't forget this is Lucifer. Usisahau huyu ni Lucifer. He said all Jews all over Europe. Akasema Wayahudi wote kule Europa. And that is where they are scattered. Na hapo ndipo walikuwa wametawanyika wakaingia. Are not allowed to farm. Hawafai kulima. They are not allowed to own land. Hawafai kumiliki ardhi. Amen. They are not allowed to use banks. Hawafai kutumia benki and they must live together. Na lazima waishi mahali pamoja. In concentrated quarters. Katika kambi ambazo wamewekwa pamoja. He knew he got them. But on the flip side Mungu Lakini upande mwingine nayo Mungu ukifuata ukifuata plans za Mungu unaweza furahi sana. Amen. Anakuwa na mamichoro kali kali. God has plans. Aka akamchenga. God decided akaenda aka announce pia went and announced that according to the bible kwamba kulingana na biblia it is wrong to lend money for interest ni makosa kupeana pesa kwa ajili ya kupata riba brother ngea kiniomba 10000 nimwambie na kurudisha na mbili juu amen hapana so the pope said kwa hiyo papa akasema christians cannot 
bimani lenders wa kristu hawawezi kuwa wanapeana mikopo ya pesa so the only people who could lend money for interest kwa hivyo watu wa peke ambao wangepeana pesa kwa ajili ya riba wa the jews walikuwa tu wayahudi so within those and you know na ujua the pope forgot papa alisahau he's taking all the money kwamba anachukua pesa zote so watu wako broke amen so lazima watafute karun amen So the Jews started lending. Wayahudi wakaanza kukopeshana zile pesa. Interest. Na kupata riba. And they were hated as Shylocks. Na wakachukiwa sana kama wale watu. And wa... Europeans hate. You know the way Shylock unamchukia lakini unaenda. Unajua jinsi ambavyo watu hao wanapeana pesa wanakutia. Alafu ukipatia unasema, "Ah, my Shylocks bugo." Unasema hapa nimedanganywa. So that is how it was. Hivi ndivyo ilivyokuwa. Amen. By the world wars, kupitia kwa vile vita vya dunia people governments were broke serikali nyingi zikakuwa zimefilisika so they started borrowing from the jews hivyo wakaanza tena kuomba pesa kutoka kwa wayahudi so the jews started giving na wayahudi wakaanza kuwakopesha there was one famous man called rothschild alikuwa na mtu mmoja maarufu sana anajulikana kama rothschild he was a jew alikuwa muyahudi and this man established himself na huyu mtu akawa amejistahili sana and he started lending governments akaanza kukopesha serikali so he would listen and know there is a war coming hivyo angesikiza ajue kuna vita vinakuja and he would tell these ones eh mnataka ngapi angeuliza hii serikali mnataka pesa nyinyi mnataka ngapi amen haya pata neni amen and he away alafu yeye anakaa kando you will wait for the war to end kisha nasubiri vita vinaisha and then the countries will be broke zile nchi zinakuwa zimefilisika tena wa hawezi kulipa so what does he do je anafanya nini he tells them anawaambia if you cannot pay kama uwezi mkulipa give me a sovereign bond hebu nipeni ile bond you have sworn by your country's sovereignty kwamba mmehapa na ukuu that you shall pay this money in future kwamba tutalipa hizi pesa hapo mbeleni so he started piling up bonds kwa hivyo akaanza kukusanyiza kukusanya zile bond amen So at that time the king and the president were seeing free money now easy money me, no, ma, 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 within a short time this guy was controlling all the central banks in Europe <laughs> not because he is the authority in those central banks because they all owe him money and the bible, bible said that the bible said that the borrower was servant to the lender you le bayo na omba na mkopeshaji huyu ndiye mjakazi amen and up to today na handi wa leo they are controlling central banks wote hawa ndi wanamiliki benki kuu amen through debt not because of money they have put there deni sio kwa sababu ya zile pesa ambazo wamewekeza pale because of the debts they owe kwa sababu ya deni ambazo walichukua bwana asifiwe sana amen I hope you are born a mastori. Natumai kwamba hadithi zangu zinawafundisha. Now, I want us to watch one thing. Ngependa basi tuzalame. If we understand this we can come and preach the seventh trumpet later now. Tukielewa hili basi tunaweza kuja kuhubiri baadaye. When the sixth trumpet happened, wakati mihuri ama bragum zilifanyika. And the Jews were kicked out of Europe. Na wale wa Yahudi wakaondolewa kule Marekani. Every God's move always gives birth to twins. Kila muondoko wa Mungu unazaa tu mapacha. Amen. So While some Jews moved back to Israel. Kwa hivyo wakati wa Yahudi fulani walikuwa wanaelekea kule Israeli. Others moved to the United States. Wengine wakaenda kule uh, Marekani. But they had nothing. Lakini hawakuwa na chochote. They started as hawkers. Wakaanza kama wachuuzi tu wareja reja. Amen. In the Jews ukiangalia katika Wayahudi ah uh, 74 Uh, uh, 73% of all Jews. Aslimia 33 ama 83 live in Israel. Ya Wayahudi wote wanakaa kule Israeli or the US au Marekani. 17% are scattered in other countries. Aslimia 17 ndio wako katika nchi zingine hizo. Those are the twins. Hao ndio wale mapacha of the sixth trumpet. Wa ile baragumu ya sita. At the end of Uh, by, by around 1900 mwaka, uh, the united states marekani had only around 500,000 jews ilikuwa tu na wayahudi yapata nusu milioni peke yao israel had 76,000 jews israel ilikuwa na 1076 the trumpet sounded baragumu ikapigwa today israel has 6.4 million leo israel iko na bilioni 6 us has 5.7 marekani wako na milioni 5.7 stay with me kaa nami amen When they landed in the United States they had to fika kule Marekani they were slowly building up kidogo walianza kujijenga 
When the prophet is saying in 1964 that the Jews na are the only other people who have the wealth, wa, 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 wa they had started doing something. Fulani, but it was not visible. You could easily question the prophet and ask him, him na kumuliza, can you show us the wealth of the Jews? Wa Amen. Not visible. But I want to show you something this morning. They started working as peddlers. Hawkers. You know how they started opening small corner shops. Slowly by slowly they started making their own goods to sell in the stores. And that is the first generation. Then second generation, third generation. Today, Leo, we are in the fourth generation of those Jews who moved to the U.S. And the prophet said they are so powerful today that they can hold the beast in terms of economic power. How did they do it? Number one, they had been chased so many times from many countries that they knew the only way to survive is to create a business that does not belong to any country. Amen. And to create a business that you can carry around with you whenever you go. Very sharp guys. Today, Leo, United States, Marikani, Jews only make 2% of the population of US. Because US is about 300 million people. And Jews are about 6 million. 2%. But that 2%, 76, 45% of Forbes top 40 billionaires are Jews. 40% in the partners in US leading law firms are Jews. Yale mashirika ya 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 Marekani ambayo yanaongoza ya sheria ni Wayahudi. 30% of America's multimillionaires are Jews. Matajiri multimillionaires zaidi ya Amerikani 37. 25% of US Nobel Prize winners are Jews. 25% ya washindi wa tuzo la Nobel. 20% of professors in the Ivy League are Jews. Asilimia ishirini ya maprofesa kule Marekani bado ni Wayahudi. From a population of 2%. Kutoka kwa watu idandi ya asilimia 2. And people who had nothing. Na watu ambao hakuwa na chochote. At the end of the second world. Mwanzo wa vita vya pili vya dunia. Amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. For us to understand the economic covenant stay with me. Tuweze kuelewa yale magano ya kiuchumi kaa nami. 7-7. I've already talked about the Rothschild <laughs> and, uh, and, and the Federal Reserve System. In the first year he says, let's try. Wall Street owns them. Amen. And Wall Street is controlled by the Jews. Wall Street yote na the rest of it is in the Vatican. Iyo iko kule Vatican. And the Jews has got the rest of it in Wall Street. Wall Street. Wall Street. With the commerce of the world. Na uchumi wa ulimwengu. Amen. That's right. I agonized with this quote. Wakati mfulani ni kajaribu kubishana na wazohili. For a month. Kwa ya pata mwezi moja. Because if you go to Google to check. Ukiangalia katika mtandao. Jewish business you will not get. Kuangalia biyashara za wayahundi. Huta pata katika mtandao. If you go to the libraries to research. Ukiangalia katika maktaba. You will not find. Utafiti huta pata. They have hidden it. Kwa meficha hili. Because of what they suffered in the second world war. Kwa kukukia mbacho walipitia wakati wa vita vya pili vya dunia. Amen. And I was praying to God. How do we come and say the Jews have the wealth? And we cannot demonstrate this wealth. We cannot show this wealth. Then one day, I was in town. 
I was going for a haircut. Nilikuwa naenda kunyolewa. On Kimathi Street. Mtawa Kimathi. And I was just walking outside Nation Center. Nilikuwa natembea tu hapo nje ya Juba Nation. And there was a guy there. Na palikuwa na mtu pale. Who displayed books to sell. Ambaye alikuwa ameweka vitabu vya kuuza. And my eye caught a book. Na macho yangu yakanasa kitabu. That is called the Jewish phenomenon. Kama phenomeno ya jina. Right right there. Pale pale. I did not bargain for this book. Hata sikubishana kununua hiki kitabu. Mwambia ni ngapi? Nikamuleta. Ni ngapi? Nikanunua. Amen. When I went to read that book. Niliposoma hiki kitabu. I'll give you a short summary. Nitawapatia tu muktasari wa kifupi. Of what I found. Wa kile ambacho nilipata. The Jews, Wayahudi, number 1. Jambo la kwanza. They own Wall Street. Next slide. Wanamiliki ule mtaa wa Wall Street. You've heard of Americani. companies like Lehman Brothers. Umesikia kampuni kama Lehman Brothers. Completely Jewish. Hiyo ni Wayahudi. Founded by Jewish. Imejengwa na Wayahudi. It went bust in the last recession. Ilionekana wakati wa. But it had controlled money in the world. Lakini ilikuwa imemiliki pesa duniani. Investment banking is putting money together. Zile benki za kuwekeza ni kuweka benki pa ni pesa pamoja. To lend companies to operate. Ili kuweza kukopesha kampuni zingine ziweze kufanya. And then they owe you through bonds. Hizi kampuni Exactly what the prophet has said. They own the bonds. Kwamba wanazo zile bonds. Goldman Sachs it still operates up to today. Kampuni nyingine inajulikana kama Goldman Sachs. It has financed most of the businesses. Most of the banks we know. Nyingi na na mbegi mingi. City Group we know it. City Group to ijua. We have a branch here City Bank. Tunalo tawi hapa. Carrel Group, the Blackstone Group, Apollo. Those are Jews. Hayo wote ni mashirika ya Kiyahudi. They own the Wall Street. Hawa ndio wamiliki wa ile Wall Street kule Marekani. And under them are multimillionaires. Na chini ya hawa ni matajiri These guys are the billionaires. Watu ambao wana utajiri mwingi. Under them are the multimillionaires. Chini yao kuna wale ambao ni wenye utajiri zaidi. So countries owe them. Kwa hivyo nchi zina Companies owe them. Kampuni zina wadai. They control mergers, acquisitions and all these things. Watu wengi wanafanya mikataba ya kibiashara hawa wote wanadai pesa. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. We una habari mambo ya ulimwengu endelea na uspiri. Amen. Utapitwa na ima neno. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Financial markets zile um, soko are maintained ifeba. using information. Hizi zina Information kukitia. is what makes markets to thrive or to crash. Amen. Hii ndio inatumika kushikilia hizi masoko. Michael kukitia. Bloomberg is a Jew. Huyu Bloomberg ni Mwayahudi. Full blooded Jew na kakofia. Amen. Forbes is a Jew. Forbes ni Wayahudi. CNBC run by Jews completely. CNBC hawa ni Wayahudi wote. So any information you get on how money markets are behaving. Habari yote ambayo unapata. Well, this is the Dow index. Soko la kifedha, jinsi boy, soko la decide what you will hear. Ni Wayahudi wanaamua And how you will react. Na jinsi ambavyo wewe Which market will behave how? Na wewe ujupe gani That is Jews. How old ni Wayahudi? Tuendelee kidogo. Information technology. Teknolojia ya habari. The guy who invented the Intel. Mtu ambaye alibuni hii Intel ni Mujahudi Kamili. Is a Jew. Amen. Michael Dell at least that one we know him. And we know that he's a full Jew. Na tajua huyu pia ni Muyahudi. Oracle. Ile Oracle. Hiyo if miss yetu hii iko hapa treasury si ni Oracle. Amen. Hiyo ni Jew. Hao pia ni Wayahudi. Elison Lawrence. Na Son Lawrence. People, the international money exchange system. Yule mtandao wa kubadilisha na pesa. Invented. Uliweza kubuniwa. By a Jew. Na Muyahudi. You can tell. Kwa hivyo unaweza kupata. Jewish businesses have no boundaries. Biashara za Kiyahudi They have no borders. Hazina mipaka yote. They are everywhere. Ziko kila mahali. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Sasa. Sijui mnaonaje hii maneno. Amen. Amen. Mumekubali kama si Roma. Now we can agree it's not Rome. Then it is our, our servants the Jews. It's uh, ni, ni wale wajakazi wetu wa Yahudi. Naao ni Mungu ameweka hapo. And it's God who has kept them there. Isn't it? Amen. The rest of us. Wengine wetu. Hii kungangana yote huwa tunangangana. Hii kelele Oh the noise we are making. Maserikali na manini manini ni kelele. Government and everywhere it's just uh, noise. Amen. The wealth is 
utajiri unao wayahudi and rome na pale rumi urumi if we understand that ukielewa hilo we can start discussing the conditions of the seven trials sasa tuweza kuanza kujadili kuhusu hali and ya, what the negotiation will be na nje between the jews and mazungumzo gani atakuepo baada ya wayahudi ni wasitue kidogo amen mark zuckerberg is a jew mark zuckerberg huyo ni muyahudi pia facebook completely Mtandao Jew Facebook who plus a lot of people who run Facebook na kuna watu wengi ambao wanamiliki Facebook control the conversations and the data of over 3 billion people na ile habari ya watu karibu bilion 3 and one of the richest na mmoja wapo wa wale matajiri zaidi companies in the world kampuni ambayo ni tajiri zaidi is Jews ni wayahudi unajua watu unajua the reason i did this amen tumezoea tukisikia Jews tunafikiri ya juu ya Abraham na Isaac mm. Na tunafikiri juu ya Isaiah na Jeremia. Amen. Wewe hao ni Jews wa jana. Amen. Lazima ujiulize Jews leo ni kina nani? Ndio tukikuja ku discuss the seven trumpets to Jews, you know what you're talking about. Amen. That's right. Eh, uh, if you read a bit then you know. Ukiendelea kusoma zaidi basi unapata. Larry Page who started Google. Kama kuna Mehudi aliye. Ah, together with his friend called Brin. Pamoja na rafiki yake anajulika kama Brim. Larry Page is a full Jew. Larry Page ni Muyahudi. Brim, the mother is Jewish. Brim, mama yake ni Muyahudi. And according to the law if your mother is Jewish you are a Jew. Na kuna sheria kama mama yako ni Muyahudi basi wewe pia ni Muyahudi. Amen. Google is Jew. Kwa hivyo Google pia YouTube ni Wayahudi. Is Jew. YouTube ni Wayahudi. Google Maps. Google Map Wayahudi. Amen. So these guys are controlling everything. They have WhatsApp is there. Hata WhatsApp ni Wayahudi. WhatsApp is for Jews. WhatsApp WhatsApp ni Wayahudi. Instagram is for Jews. Instagram Wayahudi. <laughs> Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. Huko ndio vitu zinatokanga zinaitwa Uber, Airbnb, nini zinatokanga huko. Amen. The guy who built it. Mtu ambaye alijenga And he said if you have a good business idea come. Na akasema iwapo na wazo nzuri la biashara kuja. And then if it is good, kwa kama ni nzuri, instead of paying me rent, badala ya kulinipa mimi the money you should have paid rent in the office. Pesa za ofisi, we convert it into shares in your small business. Ziwe shares za kampuni. If you do that for 100 companies, ukifanya hivyo kwa kampuni 100, and that is succeed 70 fail. Na You have share holding you are a multimillionaire already. Sabuni hizo zifanye kazi basi wewe ni mtu. Angalia hiyo akili wamepewa. Amen. The guy is called Kalberg. Huyo mtu anaitwa Kalberg. And another rock. Na another rock. That is the money of the world. Hizi ndizo fedha za ulimwengu. But the prophet in the quote we have read has said they control Lakini, the wealth. Nabii katika nukutu uliosoma anasema kwamba atamiliki utajiri and they also control the commerce na pia atamiliki biashara isn't it amen there's a lot of commerce going on around facebook na biashara nyingi ambazo zinaendelea katika facebook na imitabu let me show you something hebu anisha kifu fulani the guy who invented levis jeans he jeans to lava ambaye alipumbua jeans tunazozivaa zinaitwa levis this levis straws is a jew eh suruali za levis huyu ni muyahudi pia calvin klein ck calvin klein ck is fully jewish huyu pia ni muyahudi Calvin Richard Calvin Richard Calvin anaitwa hivyo Fully Jewish huyu ni Muyahudi kabisa A big brand called Gap this is textile now Nyingine inajulikana kama Gap is fully Jewish huyu pia ni Muyahudi Robert Fisher Robert Fisher Reebok via to the sports Reebok vile viatu vya michezo He's all Jews huyu pia ni Wayahudi Next hospitality katika upande mwingine Hyatt hotel hoteli zinajulikana kama Hyatt Global chain of hotels Hizi ni hoteli zinazopata kila mahali ulimwenguni Again the Jews they do business internationally Na huyu ni Mehudi anafanya biashara kila mahali ulimwenguni Fully Jewish Ramada the prophet preached a lot of messages at Ramada Na ita ni international group of hotels Hii ni kikundi cha hoteli za kwa Transport business avis and budget we know they are global Kusafirishaji avis na budget Those are Jews Hao wote ni Wayahudi Amen. Then the Jews looked and see people loved movies. Sasa Wayahudi wakaona watu wengi sana wanapenda. But everyone used to like shooting their movie and showing. Kwa hivyo watu wengi started movie companies. Wakaanza kampuni za movies. To bring together everybody who has a movie. Kuleta kila mtu ambaye ako na movie. Dreamworks. Ndio Dreamworks. Paramount Pictures. Paramount Pictures. Wao mimi wengine wanapenda kujikaza ni kama wacha hiyo na hii Paramount. Tururu. Tutururu kianza. Tumeona bana. Amen. 
Amen. You need Jews. Hao pia ni Wayahudi. So the entertainment industry they are holding. Kwa hivyo pia upande huu mwingine wa mawanyo. Watoto wanajua Nickelodeon. Watoto wengi wanajua Nickelodeon. You know Marvel. Marvel. You know Comedy Central. Wajua Comedy Central. Amen. MTV. MTV. Hizo zote ni Jews wameshikilia. All these are Jews. These are old by Jews. They belong to them. Are you starting to see the reason why? Jee, umeanza kuona sababu kwamba Despite all their wealth, licha ya kuwa na utajiri mwingi, Rome cannot fully operate. Rome haiwezi kufanya kazi kwa sababu They cannot fully operate yet. Hawezi kufanya kazi kabisa. They have the gold, they have the land, they have everything, they have all this. Ardhi na kila kitu. But something unusual has happened. Lakini jambo fulani lisilo la kawaida group of people have come. Kikundi fulani cha watu. And they have transformed the world commerce. Na kimegeuzwa. In a way that could never be explained. Kwa jinsi ambavyo haiwezi kueleweka. Amen. Ini leweka hapa jia wale watu najua wanapenda kampira kidogo. I put this one here because of my friends. Na watu wa Manu mnajua Glazer. Amen. <laughs> Glazer is one who owns Manchester. Glazer ndiye miliki wa kilabu hiki cha michezo cha Manchester. And is a proper Jew. Na huyu pia ni Muyahudi kamilifu. And all those tunazisikia anga Chicago Bulls basketball is big. Tunasikia Chicago Bulls. In the US uh, American football with the Yankees. Kule Marekani uh, football ya mali ya watoto. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. So if we say that the wealth of the Jews now you know. Kwa hivyo tunazungumzia utajiri wa Wayahudi sasa twaelewa. And this is nothing. Na hiki I only tutote. put here what I could verify. Nimeweka tu hiki hapa kile ambacho ningependa. Without a doubt that either it was founded by a full Jew. Bila kuwa na shaka kwamba ilianzilishwa aidha na Wayahudi or that Jews hold controlling stakes. Au Wayahudi wanamiliki uh, asilimia kubwa ya shares kwa hizo kampuni. In those businesses. Kwa hizo biashara. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. Having said that, hilo, something will have to be done. Pana jambo ambalo lazima lifanyike. To try and get this Jews strength. Kujaribu kuleta nguvu hizo zote za Kiyahudi out of the way. Inje kwa kutoka kwa njia. Because the countries all the Jews a lot of money. Maana ke nchi nyingi zinayo mandeni ya Wayahudi. That means they can control governments. Hivi kwamba Wayahudi basi wanaweza kuweza kumiliki hizi ardhi. If the Jews say no, a US president cannot be elected rais wa marekani hawezi kuchaguliwa so they control kwa hivyo hao ndi wanamiliki so to check their power kwa hivyo ili kuweza kudhibiti nguvu something has to be done lazima kitu fulani kifanyike for that to happen na hili hilo lifanyike everybody has to go into debt lazima kila mtu aingie katika madeni and when yeah. everybody goes into debt kila mtu akiingia katika deni then the proposition comes basi wazo linakuja i want you to stop worrying na ningependa tuache kuwa na shaka this question i hear swali hili ambalo nasikia that ima deni yote tunaomba china all these debts we are getting from china na watoto wetu na watoto wa watoto wetu children na children hapana no kuna mtu atatulipia there is someone who will pay for us sijali amen <laughs> kuna mtu akona do there is someone with money Amen. Lakini sisi hatutakuwa hapa. But we will not be there. That's right. Amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen. All these economic power. Hizi nguvu zote za kiuchumi has to be harnessed. Lazima zishikiliwe somehow na kwa njia fulani and that is what is called the covenant. Na hiki inaitwa ile uh, agano. That covenant cannot happen Hii when you are here. Haiwezi kufanyika tukiwa hapa. For that to take place. Kwa ajili hilo kufanyika. You will be at the wedding supper. Wewe utakuwa katika karamu ya harusi. Amen. Amen. Is it that to take place? Hilo jambo lifanyike. Are there proposals and discussions? Kuna baadhi ya mazungumzo yanaendelea. Ongoing. Kuhusu kuhusu hilo. Because of the escalating world debt. Kwa sababu ya madeni ya dunia ambayo yanazidi kuongezeka. And what can be done? Na nini kinaweza kufanya? The answer is yes. Jibu ni ndio. It's not a question of if it will happen. Sio swala la iwapo litafanyika. It's a question of when it will happen. Swala li lini litafanyika. When it happens you are not here. Litafanyika wewe hautakuwa hapa. You have disappeared in the silence of the seventh seal. Wewe utakuwa umeondoka katika ule umilivu wa muri wa saba. Amen. Bwana asifiwe sana. Amen.
When he came in Revelation 10:1, alipokuja katika ufunuo 11, he had not come to us. Hakuwa amekuja kwetu sisi. He had come to start. Alikuwa amekuja kuanza to start up ama kukuweza kuchanganya. Some Jews to go back to the to Israel. Wale wa Yahudi wengine warudi kule Israeli. And some to go and hold the power. Na wengine waende washikilie nguvu za yule hayawani kule Marekani. Amen. And while he was dropping to us the seventh seal. Na alipokuwa anatupatia ule muhuri wa saba. Those guys got the power to create wealth. Wale kule Marekani wakapata nguvu za kutengeneza utajiri to delay the fourth seal ili kuchelewesha muhuri wa nne because immediately the beast has all the money mana kimuradi tu yule hayawani yako na pesa zote immediately he starts the fourth seal mara mara hiyo hiyo ataanzisha muhuri wa nne but the money and the wealth and the commerce of the jews pesa na utajiri na biashara za wayahudi is to delay ni za kuchelewesha the fourth seal from operation muhuri wa hii na usianze kazi so that God might sneak in the seventh seal and to the elect. But the time has run out. Lakini sasa wakati umeisha. Amen. That's why we can understand when he says in Ipose tuweza kuelewa anaposema 124 124 that the seventh seal book kwamba muhuri ama kitabu cha is revealed at the time of the seven thunders of revelation 10. Inafunuliwa wakati wa gurumo 7. Now if you are marking it down. Basi wapo unaandika hilo. Let turn to Revelation 10. Okay um, fine that's revelation 10 skip to 126 tuende kwa if you notice you that is Christ huyo ni Kristo cause in the old testament was called the angel of the covenant na katika gano la kale aliitwa yule mwana and he is directly coming to the Jews now kuja moja kwa moja kwa wayahudi sasa for the church is finished kwa maana kanisa limekamilika amen He directly coming to the Jews to do what? Anakuja moja moja kwa Wayahudi kufanya nini? To set in place conditions. Ili kuweka yale mahitaji. For the seventh trumpet. Kwa anjili ya baragumu ya saba. That's Amen. what he has been doing. Hicho ndicho amekuwa akifanya. Setting in place conditions. Kuweka mahitaji. For the seventh trumpet. Ya ile baragumu ya saba. For countries to have hot air money. Ili inchi ziwe na pesa ambazo ziopatikani. For them to borrow. Ili waweze kuomba. For the Jews to prosper in their commerce. Wayahudi kuweza kuendelea katika biashara zao. And to have commerce that encompasses the whole world. Na pia biashara ambazo zinafika kila mahali ulimwenguni. So as to bring Rome. Ili alete Rome na Wayahudi into the same room. Katika ile kitu kimoja. To negotiate about the wealth of the world. Ili kujadiliana kuhusu utajiri wa ulimwengu. Those are the conditions. Hizi ndizo mahitaji. For the seven trumpet. Hali za mahitaji ya ile baraka. Are they in place? Je zinaonekana amen he was coming there alikuwa anaenda kule hakuwa anakuja hapa kwetu amen he was not coming he finished with the church he, alikuwa amemaliza na kabisa na kanisa he was going there sasa alikuwa anaenda kule listen the bride must step out of the way like lazima bi harusi aondoke njiani to go up now aende juu sasa so that the two servants of god in revelation ili wale watumishi wa wili the two prophets can appear upon the scene to sound the seventh trumpet to them wapige baragumu ya saba to make known to them the christ wajue yule kristo amen that's right this message we preach ujumbe huu tunaohubiri must go to the jew lazima uende kwa wayahudi to make known to them the Christ. Ili kuwafanya wamjue Kristo. Making the known to them the Christ. Kuwafanya wajue Kristo is called the revelation of the seven seal. Ufunuo wa muhuri wa saba. It is also called the revelation of the seven trumpets. Ufunuo wa baragumu ya saba. Because knowing Christ. Kwa sababu kumjua Kristo. He saying anasema in uh, the next slide. He is the one who opened those seals. Yeye alifungua hiyo miri. He is those seals. For the whole word of God is Christ. And Christ is the seal that was opened. Kristo ndio ile miri. What is the opening of the seal? is then revealing Christ revealing Christ is the seventh seal revealing Christ to the Jews is the seventh trumpet amen praise the name of the lord amen do you love him ampenda we can't preach it anymore siwezi kuhubiri hili tena God bless you. Bwana wabariki. Hebu tusimame. Amen. 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 Do you love the Lord? Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand clap. Amen. We love you Lord. Amen.
Thank you. God's truth is marching on. Ukweli wa Mungu unaendelea mbele. My eyes have seen the glory. Macho yangu yameona utukufu. Of the coming of the Lord. Wakuja kwa Bwana. Have you eyes seen the glory? Macho yako yameona utukufu. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing glory glory hallelujah. Tuimba wimbo huo utukufu utukufu hallelujah. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He had loosed his faithful lightning off his terrible sweet sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. can read his righteous sentence by the dim and glaring lamps he is dead is marching Sounded for the trumpet, I shall never sound the truth. He is sifting out the dust and then before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer. Oh, be jolly and my feet. Our God is marching on. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Sounded for the trumpet, and it will never sound retreat. And the seventh seal is here, sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Be swift, my soul, to answer. Amen. Be to blunt my feet to run. To respond to the message of the seven seals. Because time is fast spent. As you sing that verse again. If you are here. And you have not given your life to Christ. It is later than you think my brother. It is later than you think my sister. And there is only one way to start. Repent and be baptized. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Christ for the removal of your sins. And he shall give you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He shall give you the genuine atonement. Feel free to walk in front. We will pray with you and you will be baptized ushered into the kingdom. He has sounded for the trumpet that shall never sound retreat. Oh, he is sifting out the eyes of men 
before his judgment seat. He made me soon my soul to answer. Oh, be your and my faith. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Beauty of the lead. His Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his posture that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us die to make men free. While God is marching on, oh glory, glory, hallelujah. Trumpet had sounded. Just before the seventh trumpet, he created a small opening for you and for me. And in that opening, the Saki tried a preacher when riding over the land with a rifle on his shoulder and a Bible in his hand. Oh, he told the prayer of a blessed promise that as he went riding, singing along. Oh, yeah, yes, I did. I sing on the everlasting love. Yes, I'm living. He preached the comic judgment of fire and brimstone and a glorious endless heaven of the justified alone. As he rode across the mountain, you could hear him sing this song as he went riding on. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood. Oh, Lord, yeah. Lord, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Then he left his, his rifles old and rusty, and it's hanging on the in Arizona. And his Bible's worn and dusty, and his cell don't touch the all. But this message from this Bible <laughs> will set us dark and day. Why? God's truth is yes. marching on. Sing it, church, glory. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory. Hallelujah. And glory, glory. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? As we go to pray, present your needs to the Lord. And may we ask him this afternoon. If we get nothing else out of his life, may he put in us to respond to the seventh seal. Amen. Wow. 
Present your needs to the Lord. Tell him what you need of him. His mother and neighbor. He started this work. Precious Heavenly Father, we submit ourselves into the anointing of the revelation of the Son of Man. Dear Lord, we rejoice in the Spirit this afternoon, We thank you for speaking your word unto us, Lord. Dear Lord, helping us to know ourselves, oh to know where we are, recognizing our day and its message, and that is eternal no life to us, o God. In humility, O God, we come with contrite hearts, praying that you may help us not to look at our weaknesses, our human failures, but to set our eyes upon these great things that are happening right in our midst. And to know, Father, that we can look up for our redemption is near. Heavenly Father, that we confess our sins. Dear Father, we pray that you may wash us in the washing of the water by the blood, the waters of separation, the bleeding word, O God, the revelation of the Son of Man. Dear Lord, may we submit ourselves to this message, O God, that as we listen to the voice, as we read those messages, we may be ushered in into rapturing condition. Because the world is ready. Are we ready, Lord? Have mercy upon us, O Father. Your children have raised their hands. With various needs, O God. Some of them caused directly by the conditions of the world. As the world prepares for its destruction. Those, O oh, Father, with financial problems, O oh, Father. We claim the blessing of Goshen upon them. That as the rest of the Egypt was in darkness, there was light in Goshen. As the rest of Egypt had famine, there was food in Goshen. We claim the blessing of God upon your children this morning, O oh Father. Provide for them, O oh God. Bless them, dear Father. Encourage the heartbroken, O oh God. Lift up the heartbroken, O oh God. Heavenly Master, repair relationships. Restore families, O oh God. This is our humble prayer. Dear Father, may you provide all their needs, O oh God. We pray and thank you for our pastor as he continues to do his work, O oh God. Bless him and be with him. Give him physical strength, oh God. Give him abundance of revelation and inspiration as he continues to shepherd us so far and to show us the way, oh God. May we love him and respect him, oh Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the service you have given us. As we leave, it's a humble prayer of overcome our battles through the week, oh God. Till such a time you'll give us to meet us to meet here again. We thank you and we glorify your name. For we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Amen. For dismissal. Brother James will read the announcement and sing a dismissal song. God bless you so much and keep you through the week. So in the morning, so
sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, going forth with weeping, sowing for the master. Though the loss sustain, our spirits often grieve. When our weeping's over, he will build us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Amen. 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 through the week, shall we say the grace? The grace of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God and the, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. You can sing us dismissal song as you will. Amen. Amen. Sing the lifeboat soon is coming. Number 116. We are floating down the stream of time. We have not long to stay. The stormy clouds of darkness will turn to brightest day. Then let us all take courage, for we are not left alone. The life will soon is coming to gather the jewels home. Then cheer my brother, cheer up, our trials will soon be old. Our love comes, we shall be, shall be upon the golden shore. Pilgrims and we are strangers here. We are seeking a city to come. The life for soon is coming to gather the deep world's home. Sometimes the devil tempts me and says. to live a Christian life and walk in Jesus' name. But then we hear the Master say, I'll lend you a helping hand. And if you'll only trust in me, I'll guide you to that land. Then cheer, my brother, cheer up. Our trial.
cause will soon be old. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon the golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. The life put soon is coming to gather the jewels home. The life but soon is coming by eyes of faith I see as she sweeps through the waters to rescue you and me and land us safely in the port with friends that we love so dear get ready Christ the captain oh look she's all Cheer up, our trials will soon be old. Our loved ones we shall be shining upon the golden shore. We're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. Is coming to gather the jewels home. Oh, now's the time to get on board while she is passing by. But if you stand and wait too long, you shall forever. Trials will soon be old. Our loved ones we shall meet, shall meet upon the golden shore. The youth chairman, we're pilgrims and we're strangers here. We're seeking a city to come. The light but soon. Is coming to gather the dream.